60% of Americans are not meeting their daily magnesium intake, and it's 70% for calcium intake. So please be mindful of what you're eating. As well as you're counting calories, try to count nutrients as well. Some of the metrics we track is like calcium daily intake, magnesium intake, vitamin C intake, salt intake, uh, hydration levels, urinary pH, and ketones. Mirai, welcome to Wellness Wisdom. Thank you so much, George. How are you? I'm doing really good. I just got through a little bit of sickness, uh, the springtime sickness. So it's perfect timing for us to talk about biomarkers and this little test strip that I got. It's called Vivo, which is beautiful. It's got a QR code on it. We're going to talk about this technology in depth. But if people don't know anything about urine testing, when did that actually start up in medicine and functional medicine and just give people a really high level view? We'll get into the details as we go into the podcast, but give people a high level view of how this technology actually came to be for people's wellness. Sure. So uh, when I talk to people, they sometimes think that we invented urine tests. This is not correct. Uh, urine tests are actually 30 something year old technology. Uh, it's been used, the, uh, these colorimetric sensors has been used for decades now. Uh, what we're trying to do is build a health tracker, just like your Apple Watch or your Aura Ring, uh, turn urine testing into a health tracker so you can be on top of your biomarkers. And some of the metrics we track is like calcium daily intake, magnesium intake, vitamin C intake, salt intake, uh, hydration levels, urinary pH, ketones, and for example, ketones. I'm sure you uh, did keto tests before you bought from Amazons, etc. It's yes. a similar technology. What is different in Vivo is you don't have to rely on manual process. Our image processing, and uh, which is enhanced by machine learning, captures the image after you urinate. All you need to do is just take a picture of it through your app and your results will instantly come to your mobile application along with your, uh, obviously, personalized recommendations about what you should eat, what you should do, etc. That's pretty cool because it takes the guesswork out of it. And I've always been a big proponent of testing. Um, Quantified Self 2015, I went down to the wharf in San Francisco when they just started doing the Quantified Self uh, wellness and health technology. And it was a really big movement at the time. But you know, the thing was, is it was too complicated. It was like people couldn't figure out how to send things in. And there was this like component where you would do some type of testing at home. And then you would send it to a lab and you'd wait like six weeks and then you'd get back your results. That is not the case with this, which is really cool. Um, the test takes 90 seconds. So your urinate takes 90 seconds. And I want to go right into these markers too, because it's really big for us. Um, we always love to talk about the intelligence that the body has. The body has so much intelligence. We just have to listen to it. And I noticed in your branding, it says your body's voice. How did you come up with that branding? And what do you mean by that? Your body's voice. Uh, it's actually now expanded to listen to your body's voice. Even uh, better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because um, your body's voice was confusing a little bit. So we said, okay, it's actually meaning uh, listen to your body's voice. And yes. you actually mm, really summarize it well. Um, a body knows it all. <laughs> it's just sometimes we have to listen to it or understand what it needs uh, and unfortunately we don't have sensors like wouldn't it be amazing if your arm turns into green when you're calcium deficient right that would be amazing that'd be a but cool halloween <laughs> costume <laughs> but we don't have those sensors yeah uh, obviously side effects or long-term uh deficiencies uh side effects can occur really after decades of the, after the deficiency starts, like osteoporosis. You see it after 65, but actually you can take uh, maybe uh, some obstacles, you can change it while you're 30, 35, 40. If you had a tool to see that you're not taking enough calcium daily, that's where we started actually, yeah. It's really cool because I've always thought blood test was the standard, but urine is just as accurate, if not more. Why did you decide as a company to go to the urine route instead of saliva or blood? What is special about the urine specifically? Um, I wouldn't say urine is better or urine is uh, 
stronger or anything. Urine is different than blood. For example, we cannot say you're calcium deficient. Uh, we cannot say you're magnesium deficient. We can only see daily intake and your daily habits results as you're accessing uh, your uh, your body is removing the excess amount, which is indicating how much you're taking daily. Uh, the reason we picked urine is, is actually, it is so simple to collect. <laughs> and there are so many colorimetric and lateral flow tests that can give instant results. When it comes to blood testing, by the way, I did all the tests that you mentioned. I did all the every level else, let's get checked, Viomes, 23andMe's. And the process is a little bit broken. You're right, collect your sample at home, Wait for weeks to get your result. And yeah. once you get it, it's just a number. And to see actually if you can improve it with lifestyle changes, you have to pay another $100, $200. And it is just not cost effective. It is not fast. If it, It's not giving feedback. It's just giving you a number. So that's actually how where we see urine is, is a shortcut, basically, providing instant information. Obviously, if you're calcium deficient in a really clinical way, you should be taking a doctor's uh, guidance on multiple type testing, uh, multi-supplements, etc. But Vivo is highlighting your daily intake, which can actually result in deficiency in long term. So it's every single day, you wouldn't take this test every day or do you? What is the, what is the adequate Thank testing you. for the strip? <laughs> it depends on you. Uh, so we have customers testing themselves two times a day or once a month. We see, we're seeing it all. And and at first, like people were like, no, everybody should test once a week. <laughs> and I'm like, no, they don't actually. Like if they find their own pattern to be on top of their metrics and wh whatever the frequency they need, they can test themselves in that frequency. I test myself once in two days. Mm. That's what I love. My husband tests himself once, uh, once in two weeks. Some of our customers test themselves twice a day. So there's no real recommendation as, as far as this is what everyone should be doing. It's dependent on the user's needs themselves. So what type of person is attracted to this technology compared to other yeah. technologies? Uh, by the way, we recommend uh, a weekly testing just as a starting point. But I saw that after that, like a couple of tests, people evolved into their, their frequencies. Um, so obviously we started with biohackers, keto diet, paleo, paleo diet, uh, followers, etc. And I thought that these early adapters will be our consumers for a long time. But what we saw as an interesting transition is uh, elder community uh, who are using a lot of drugs are using Vivo to track their hydration and sodium levels. Uh, obviously, uh, Ladies who are getting into menopause, tracking their calcium intake. So uh, people who want to lose weight, tracking all of their metrics to be on top. If they're lacking some mineral, that will actually end up as they're eating more, etc. So we're seeing a lot of different audiences finding different values in Vivo. I think it's because we're testing a wide range of metrics for a really affordable price. It starts from $5 a test. So compared to all the other tests out there, uh, Vivo is super affordable and giving so much more information. So we're seeing so many different audiences. It's really cool because a lot of times people just go off of, quote, how they feel. But when it comes to hydration specifically, I think I've read some statistics. Maybe you can chime in on this. Most people are chronically, chronically dehydrated. And it's not just drinking water. You know, I go through four or five of these 24-ounce yeah. glass jars of water every single day. But without having some kind of barometer to teach yourself, I guess that's really the question here, teaching yourself what it truly feels like to be hydrated, but not just from water, from sodium, from potassium, from yeah. magnesium, right? Can you expand on that a little bit? Yes. I actually have a really funny, horrible story about it. So before we launched Vivo 2.0, uh, we didn't have sodium, uh, calcium, magnesium, none of these metrics. We had only hydration, pH, ketones, you know, standard temperature urine dipstick metrics. And my hydration was always great. And I was so proud of myself. I was like showing, look at my hydration. Every time I pee, it's amazing. And then we launched our new product. And what I saw was I was always low in sodium, always, always low in magnesium, always low in calcium. Huh. And it, it was just like, oh my God, a wake up call. Well, you're exercising, you're drinking always water. When you're salting your food, you're always conservative because you don't want to take too much of it. You don't want to be bloated or anything. 
which results as actually fatigue, chronic fatigue. And then I start, then we have this amazing um, advisor, Dr. James, who wrote this book called Salt Fix. I actually read, read that book and I'm like, oh my God, I was doing it all wrong. And I started to introduce salt in my food. First, it made it taste good, really good. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and now I feel much better. And it followed by some magnesium supplementation. I opened myself for actually nut family nuts to increase my calcium intake. So uh, when you have limited data points that you're tracking, actually, you might be blindsided. That's why I'm like, okay, this is amazing. Now we have all these metrics, but what we're missing, because uh, something can be looking good on the surface, but you know, deep down, you might be lacking a lot of electrolytes, which... Uh, which is my fault. I should have been a better biohacker myself. But now I'm really glad that I can track all these metrics. And in terms of hydration, uh, I guess that's one of the uh, metrics in average is really, really low for our consumer. Uh, I, we are good at drinking this, right? And we are good at now taking our electrolytes as well. Uh, but people are actually missing, especially in America. Uh, they think mm. drinking Coke or drinking a juice is a equivalent of drinking water. <laughs> Uh, drinking coffee is the colognes of drinking water and they don't hydrate themselves properly. And that ends up with fat fatigue, uh, focus problems, sleep problems, yeah, energy problems, everything. Have you seen, you know, it'd be a beautiful company for you to collaborate with is LMNT, you know, the salt hydration packets, magnesium, yes. potassium. I remember we had Rob Wolf on the show and we'll link the notes here below wherever you're watching this so mm -hmm. you can learn more. But Rob was saying when you go and do the sauna specifically, yes, you're losing water, but you're really losing salt. That's the big one. And so somebody might drink 24 ounces of water when they're done with the sauna, but they might think that that's an incorrect baseline of them actually having proper sodium. But when you actually do the test and you see it in real time, that can start to give people a real behavior change curve over time. Yes. Have you seen this play out? Yes. Yeah, so just run a couple of miles and do a VWU test. You'll see it actually. <laughs> uh, it, you can see that's another benefit of instant feedback for some of the like sodium and uh, Hi hydration. Also pH is giving almost instant feedback. Yeah. The pH one's interesting. So I've, I have a cold tank in the garage and I have a little pH strip and I add in alkaline or, or acid. Our body's the same way. Is there an optimal range for us to be as far as pH and how do we use the app and the strip so that we can identify our pH and make adjustments accordingly? Mm -hmm. uh, the pH is an indicator for us to acidic load of your diet and um, what we're trying to do is make you be in a more balanced range of pH 6 to 7. Um, but uh, for what we realize after years of years of data, uh, vegan people and vegetarian people have more alkaline pH naturally, just because they eat more vegetables if they're doing a good diet. Yes. Um, so uh, if you're seeing alkaline results, don't be panicked. But if you're seeing acidic results, you can just maybe recall your day of diet that day. If you drink Coke, if you drink coffee, if you ate chocolates, if you eat so much uh, animal protein, you can see more acidic uh, urine pH, which is normal, but uh, try to balance it with more vegetables, fruits, etc., to make it more alkaline. That is the goal here. It actually kind of shows, like it's so funny, like it kind of highlights, but you cannot for sure know if they drink Coke or coffee or alcohol for sure, but they obviously did something to, uh, that acidized their urine, yeah. There's something really special that, that I've always explained as a mirror of mindfulness when it comes to any type of tracker, you know, anything we wear in our body. And I, I wear the ring too, you know, I wear the Aura ring. We're not affiliated with them. They don't have an affiliate program, but I, I enjoy looking at the data. But sometimes I actually find that I can stress out, and I've had people write in about this too, stressing out about the data from the mirror of mindfulness, from the tracker, can actually cause more stress than yes. just living your life. But Vivo is a little bit different because it's not like you're wearing it, right? It's something that you're checking in on. So how is this a healthy mirror of mindfulness? Really great question. <clears throat> so, you know, I had a late flight to SF and I had early meetings and I knew I could only, I was only going to be able to sleep for six hours, which is less than I normally do. So actually last night I took out my aura 
put it to the bedside. And in the morning, I wore it back again. Because when I woke up, I didn't want it to see 63%, 50% yes. recovery rate. So I would feel mentally, I knew like I would be here like so down. I didn't want it to face that. And I'm aware of that fact as a user of these products myself. And in Bivu, I think we have a long way to go. But I want people to be encouraged by their, by their results. I want people to be like, oh, okay. Um, it's a little bit ab above the average. How can I improve it? And next time, see seeing that they improved it. And maybe you saw Vivo's language is a little bit more friendly than more like rigid. The reason behind that is we don't want to panic people. We don't want to make people sad. We don't want to make them feel punished because they're not hydrated. But we want to help them to be hydrated for the next te test, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think that's the most... People are not... I will say lack of, I don't know, information right now. People is lack of motivation. <laughs> like we all know what to do. Uh, I know what to do. You know what to do. But sometimes we just skip it just because we don't feel like it. We don't have the motivation. Yes. And a product, an app should be encouraging you, not making you feel down. Yeah. That's beautiful. Or it's a great product, by the way, but just as an example. <laughs> sure, sure. No, it's beautiful. And I, and I think about too, you know, you're, you're the founder. And so um, the feminine awareness that you bring to the messaging and to the behavior change, it's much different than a male-led company. I think it's actually a breath of fresh air. Have you, have you considered that? And is your team made up of mostly women or is it a nice blend of both? Because I could see being the founder yourself, you know, your ability to give people behavior change recommendations without it being so forced and so serious could probably make people in the long term change their behaviors more easily. Uh, we have a 70% woman team. It, it happened organically. It's not like we were discriminated to men or anything. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, we have a big development team too. They're all men. There's no woman there. We couldn't find any uh, women should call it more. Um, maybe like it, it just because I'm a woman, maybe uh, and the bigger audience for these products are women, like 70% of Mibu's users are women. Women, mm. women shops more. 85% of e-commerce is run by women. So we are basically selling to women who are buying for their husbands if, if, they are, if, they, if the man is using. So yeah. um, I see uh, there are so many opportunities for Vivu to evolve in the future. For example, period tracking. Period tracking is something so simple that we've been doing for years with Flow, Apple Health, uh, Clue, whatever. Uh, but now we have magnesium daily intake and we, alert, we can alert people when their period is coming. Uh, hey, you haven't been taking enough magnesium. This might cause cramps, which is a proven fact by scientific world. Or, hey, you should hydrate more to have a better flow. Or, hey, what, would you like to move? Here are some yoga moves for you. Like more holistic approach rather than just tracking dates for example, or during pregnancy, after pre uh, post-pregnancy, uh, there is a lot we can do in terms of nutrient tracking because uh, prenatal market has no ability to test themselves unless they're paying hundreds of dollars every time. Can this be a tool for them? Uh, we are not serving, by the way, to that market. If we go to that market, all the ranges will be re-evaluated evaluated for prenatal market. And maybe we will add more metrics like hormone tracking, et cetera. But what, what I'm trying to say is, I guess, being a woman um, makes me see some of the missing elements in the market. Because some yeah. of these period apps also founded by men. <laughs> <Funny fact. laughs> well, that seems kind of counterintuitive. So I love that you said it's 70% organically that happened that way. And I think about the technology component of this too. You have this um, machine learning that's really interesting. You know, sometimes people might hear about artificial intelligence or machine learning and they might be like, oh my God, is the robot spying on me? That's, that's not what you're doing with your company, right? So talk a little bit about the machine learning aspect. How does it learn about the user over time and then, and then truly help them over time? So we're using actually machine learning in multiple areas of our company. And it was our, sa it was our savior, I would say. Uh, we wouldn't be able to launch without machine learning. Uh, to read these colors as accurate as an optical device, which is getting no sunlight from outside, was a really big challenge. And we did everything we could do. Every method on the market, we tried until we come to machine learning. Machine learning means we basically teach our machine 
hundreds of thousands of different variations of these tests. And when a new test comes, despite the lightning can be different, your form model can be different, whatever is the parameter is different, machine predicts the result as accurate as a lab test. It's better than human eye and it's close. It's the closest to the lab test. When we use standard computer vision, I don't want to like use so much terminology, but first our image processing, like how we capture the data, color change accurately is done by machines right now. It doesn't mean machines are spying on you. It just machine uh, gets your strip anonymously and assign you results. And those results come to you from backend to your phone. Again, uh, through APIs without even knowing who you are. That's how the technology works at the moment. Like we, we don't have to know Josh has acidic pH <laughs> in his urine. Yeah. We don't have to know, know that. Uh, Josh is just an encrypted persona in our backend. So all your data is encrypted and safe. Another element we use machine learning is actually right now we're working on it. It's not launched yet. Personalized advice generating. If you try the product, you might felt like, okay, they're advice, but they're just advice. How can it be more personalized? How can it be more precise? That's why we are using machine learning right now. Um, and another area is actually how can we uh, create uh, better uh, analytics information about which state is more hydrated, which state is I don't know which city is doing uh, better on calcium intake, and what are the reasons behind that. Like, for example, we did this research and we saw Hawaii was the best hydrated place. And I was thinking, why it can be, why it can be. Then I realized they banned the plastic bottles there and they have water fountains everywhere and everybody carries water bottles. Can it be the reason, like making these predictions to improve overall society's well-being is another area we are using. So you have geolocation. So do you notice in like the South where they have a lot of barbecue and salty foods. I'm here in Texas, right? So a lot of people are eating a more, I guess you could say, and it's a blanket statement, but they're eating more of an acidic diet. Are you seeing that in different locations in the United States specifically? Because it sounds like you found that in Hawaii, they were hydrated. So mm -hmm. are you seeing that people have more of an acidic diet with the geotagging? I would be honest, in overall America, uh, we are seeing more acidic um, urine compared to the global so i would I, I don't know maybe i have to check if austin or sorry uh texas in general is more acidic than compared to united states but us actually is more dehydrated compared to europe and more acidic compared to europe we have customers in europe too uh -huh. obviously these are all anonymous data like sure, please don't sure. think that josh has acidic urine no like josh is a number in our back end and we're seeing these multi-data becomes more in meaningful analytics. What we saw though, richer, I will say our higher income places are starring themselves more. <laughs> so like keto diet, like they have more ketones in their urine uh, huh. if they're like a higher income area, what's still called. Uh, like there's more pressure for them to look better or something, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's fascinating. So I, I think about the the MDA for oxidative stress. We chatted a little bit about this before we hit record, but I've always learned that oxidative stress was something from the blood, but you can get an MDA marker uh, through the urine. Why is that so special, the MDA, when we look at oxidative stress? What can that actually show people? How do they change from that marker? Well, it's one of the most common, actually, um, byproducts of lipid peroxidation. peroxidation if I could pronounce words right. Uh, it's melondaldehyde, actually, MDA, if you want to research it. And um, free again, free radicals have multiple forms. It's just not MDA. There are multiple free radicals, just like there are multiple antioxidants. And uh, it's something that we can track, track from urine with a colorimetric test. Uh, we are seeing um, as a pattern, if there is a UTI or if the patient, uh, if the customer is having an infection, we are seeing an increase. We also have saw, saw some increase on smoking audiences, smoking customers. But in general, it's uh, normally it should be around the normal range. Uh, but I think it's again, I, I saw this like I, the two parameters I would like to take it further is uh, free radicals and vitamin C. The reason behind it is free radicals should also maybe come with your postal code and some air pollution alerts in your app, not just MDA metric from your urine. Yeah. And 
in, and also it should maybe look at your vitamin C and other uh, antioxidant levels from your urine to match your MDA levels. So it can have a more complex uh, algorithm in the future. And vitamin C is another metric we, are, uh, we would like to improve because the detection limit of it. What we can see is the lowest detection, like if there is no vitamin C in urine, it cannot mean two things. Either you're deficient or you're taking just enough, barely enough. So low means that in vivo, and uh, we're trying to improve our detection limit with further testing for vitamin C. Other than that, uh, sodium, magnesium, and calcium have more, uh, I would say, rigid background in terms of daily intake to uh, urine result has been correlated by scientific articles already. Unfortunately, urine is not well studied. That's a problem for us. Like it's studied for some areas, but some of them, we have some articles and we always have to repeat it with our own cl clinical trials because you cannot build a product based on two articles, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And I wish urine was uh, studied more. Um, and I think Vivu's contributions to scientific world in time would be significant because we have a big amount of data that we can actually indicate some important, I will say, uh, Bio biomarkers and diseases and chronic diseases and lifestyle, et cetera, in future. Yeah. In the app, and I haven't dug too deep into the app, I've done a handful of tests that were really eye-opening for me. I actually had a significant amount of oxidative stress. I think it's just because I got over the flu, so there was a direct mirror there. But I was Oxidous wondering sickness, for- we see that, by the way. Yeah. Yes. So I wasn't too shocked. I'm like, let me take that in a couple of weeks when I'm feeling awesome, you know? So, but, but I'm curious with the coffee drinkers, with the caffeine drinkers, how does this impact the results with the test strip across the board? In other words, if somebody's chronically drinking coffee, three, four, five cups a day, or energy drinks, multiple energy drinks, how does that show up on the test strip if they're a chronic caffeine user? I was a chronic caffeine user. I recently quit. <laughs> it's been three weeks now. It's an interesting relationship with caffeine, isn't it? It's like this back and forth love-hate relationship it can be. Uh, after I quit, literally, it's like you quit something. It's so funny. It's because I, it started with I whitened my teeth so I couldn't drink coffee. Then I started to feel, oh, my God, I was addicted to coffee because I'm like constantly. <laughs> so, so I had, let me just ease that. And what I see is my urinary pH. That's the biggest thing. I was always acidic. Such a shame for me because I'm eating all these beautiful, uh, I, I'm following a Mediterranean diet because I'm from Turkey. Um, I eat so many vegetables, olive oil based, home cooked vegetables, beans, etc. Then uh, coffee actually makes my urine always acidic, acidic, acidic. Coffee and alcohol, I would say. Um, so after I quit, I started to see no life change, no diet change. My urine pH is always alkaline. Mm. And I actually started to feel um, better, especially at the night time, night times. Um, and Vivo also shows sleep score as well through your Apple health data. My sleep score also improved. Um, I, I wouldn't say anything bad about coffee because if you want to lose weight, it also helps you to burn your fat and it gives you a lot of energy. Uh, but it also after you quit for a while and you drink it, it, it made my stomach really uncomfortable as well. What is your take? My, my <sighs> relationship with coffee is so weird. I don't yeah. think it's personal now. Yeah, it's, it's definitely personal. It's like if you bring up uh, caffeine at a table, everybody's going to say, well, I can't live without my morning coffee. I used to drink coffee. This is interesting, but I, I, I used to drink coffee. And about six months ago, I started only doing espresso. And I looked at some of the research with espresso versus coffee. Coffee can be 16 to sometimes even 20 ounces or more of very acidic liquid. But with espresso, it's two ounces or less and I like that some of the tannins and some of the, the I guess you could say, uh, what it does to your physiology, you know, the actual ingredients and what's inside of espresso. And I really love the research. And I just personally love the way that I feel. I'll make a two ounce espresso. I'll drink maybe an ounce of it. And then I'll give the rest to the birds, <laughs> you know, 
because for me, I have a very sensitive immune system. And so if I'm pushing the gas pedal down, and this is for all of us that might feel tired, who might have brain fog, pouring gasoline on a fire that's already burning too hot is not necessarily yeah. going to make you have a better day. It's just kind of like cheating. It's almost like people are cheating. So that's why I was curious with the caffeine intake. It's not just from coffee. We see energy drinks out there. There's a lot of drinks that people are using to mask the way that they actually feel, which is tired. Maybe they need more sleep. And it begs a deeper question, what are some of the other tech platforms or some of the other health applications that can dovetail with Vivo to make sure that people are correcting the ship, to make sure that people are coming back to homeostasis? Are there other relationships that you have um, in place that helps people actually look at their phone and get like a heads up display of how they're showing up? Yeah, uh, definitely for coffee and alcohol, uh, we're seeing that we, we heard this a lot from our customers. Uh, yes, I can see why it's acidic because it's not just the result of your pH. It also comes to the recommendations area. And we always warn about, hey, limit these foods, chocolate, chocolate um, coffee, alcohol, and increase these food. And they instantly understand. Again, it's, it's like we're trying to give them the ability to sense something in time uh it it doesn't make sense maybe but my, my hope would be you can before you urinate you can actually sense your ph of your urine it sounds stupid i know but no it you, sounds perfect if you do it long enough <laughs> like when i urinate now when i when i look at the texture of it i can see the hydration not just the smell or anything i can i can from the sound of it because i did it so many times it kind of gave me this ability to sense it just like learning artificially basically yes yeah. and so people come to this they don't have to be to use the product you don't have to be a technology focused person it's really easy i mean i don't know anybody that doesn't have a phone pretty much everyone has a smartphone of some type and so you really just have to have a phone and to be able to just urinate on the stick for two seconds or so and that's it, right? You don't have to be very technically illiterate and very high technical with your mind to use the product. No, and if, if, if you guys, when you try, if you don't understand anything, let us know so we can make it more simple because it, it is an everyday product for everyday users. It, we are trying to eliminate the scientific language as much as possible, but for people who'd like to learn more, we always have learn more in the application with more references, scientific references, articles, et cetera. So we're trying to cater for the both words. Yeah. It's beautiful. Okay, so right now, we're still going to talk a little bit more about your story and the science, but right now, um, your company gave us 30% off, which is amazing. So if you guys are feeling excited and you want to start learning about your ketones and your pH and your hydration, just go to joshtrent.com forward slash Vivo, V-I-V-O-O. And you can use the code Josh to get 30% off. And we'll obviously link this in the show notes and at the end of our podcast as well. I'm curious for you, like, how did you even get into this? You know, a woman growing up in Istanbul, was it something that you always leaned into was technology as a young lady? Or how did that come online for you? I'm a bioengineer. So I, 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 I always wanted to do something in biotech field. But how I met with urine test is actually a funny story. So I had this internship. I was back in Istanbul. It was like 2010 or something, 2011 or something. So I had this internship and I went to this uh, hospital and they put me into biochemistry lab. And what I did is I dipped urine dipsticks to urine and put it to optical reader, then look in the microscope if there are leukocytes and took notes. And I did this for a whole day. And I was so disgusted by it. I was like, Oh my God, like, I, I don't want to see one more pee. I don't want to see one more urine <laughs> or stool. I was also doing stool testing. I was doing blood testing. And I went to the management. And I said, guys, I'm a bioengineer. Like, I don't want to be here. Take me to another laboratory in your hospital. And they took me to this uh, amazing stem cell treatment center for um, uh, leukemia, sorry, uh, blood cancer patients. And it was life changing for me because I saw people basically. They, they were taking all of their blood from one vein, centrifuge, separate the stem cells, give it back to, to the body, and then apply chemotherapy, radiotherapy, basically empty all the uh, stem cells, fields of your body, then give your stem cells back. 
to cure the cancer. And it was such a life-changing experience for me. But I, all I remember from the internship is that experience, not urine tests. I hated them. I never wanted to see them again. Years after years, so I started this company for mobile diagnostics. We were testing cattle on fields. We were testing cows for brucella, salmonella-like infectious diseases with portable sensors. And on those years, I, I remember there, was the, there were these urine tests that changed colors. I just remembered them and I ordered a set. And then I, uh, by, that, by this time, I moved to the United States for this company, the cattle testing company. And I was looking at Amazon and seeing amazing reviews, like people were using it for self-tracking and people were understanding their results. So what we were doing in a hospital was actually used by consumer. And at that time, I was also such a biohacker myself. I was spending all my money on tests and devices and everything. And every time I get a device, I remember I was so disappointed because I paid so much money, so limited data. Why can't it be affordable so everybody can do it? These are good, 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 good services. And yeah, so it was just an idea like, hey, can we make this read by mobile phone? Because optical reader is not necessary. Now it was 2018, 2017, mobile phone, mobile phone cameras were strong, really yes. strong, started yeah. to change. And it was an idea. The first prototype was you, you were urinating on a test, taking a picture and emailing it for us. <laughs> uh, that's when we raised uh, pre-seed money from 500 startups. And uh, we had to let go our previous company, but we were so lucky because our previous company was never raised a, a penny. It was a government a uh, grant funded company. So we had this amazing laboratory and tools and office space that we could actually do further R&D for other products. And we just gave this all this uh, laboratory that we have to Vivu. Uh, we just transferred it with no cost. And we started building a test for at home. And when we started, I wouldn't even dream of having such a wide range of testing and such a great app. It was so simple. And now I'm more excited about what can it turn into in the next couple of years. Yeah, what are you story. excited <laughs> about with that? No, it's a beautiful story. It came to you not because you were planning on it. It came to you because it organically showed up. That's what I heard from you. Yeah, it happened. Uh, and I'm so glad it happened because mm, now we're actually making change in consumers' life. We're getting so much no nice jo notes, Josh. And again, it's always something as simple as hydration they're thanking us thank you my father yeah. uh, is now using vivo it was so hard at first but we managed to teach him to scan himself and now he's checking his hydration every week so he doesn't have to rely on once or twice a year doctors visit to know if he's hydrated something simple but it is changing that person's life it's so beautiful to hear it's fascinating to me because I, I look at the strip here, and if you're watching with us on YouTube, it almost looks like beautiful stained glass, like a beautiful stained glass window. But inside of each one of these colored squares, there are markers that the camera picks up. And so how did you actually make this? And how did, I, every single one comes in a, a sealed package so that it's not contaminated by air, I assume, or any liquids. Air, but, light. And air, air or a light. So as soon as you take this out, you need to use it right away. So I need to use this one today because I just opened it up. Um, how did you actually bake the technology inside of this little strip? I could see how that would be incredibly daunting and challenging, yes? Yes. So uh, there, there are chemical reagents, change color uh, with the analyte's presence and based on the amount of the analyte present, which means... For example, mm, let's take a pH is the simplest, but let's take nitrate. We have, if there is nitrate present in your urine, nitrates come from nitrate producing bacteria. And we have nitrate, nitrate oxi oxidized in here. When they meet, it turns into a pink color. And if there is more, like let's say if there is uh, X milligram, it turns into light pink. If it's 10x milligram, it turns into really dark pink and it goes on and on. Uh, for hydration, for example, we have a range from green to yellow. Gr dark green means you're super overhydrated and yellow means you're dehydrated. And you can test actually with different fluids at home. You can see the color changes. If you dip it to salty water, if you dip it to 
supplement like vitamin C, you will be seeing this metric. This is vitamin C turn into almost white from this blue. So um, how we do it, by the way, this design is uh, made by our designer. This is the second version of our product. We had a different one before. Uh, this is for comfortably urinating on it. And you can't believe how many people pee on it before it comes to your hands. So it is user-friendly to pee on it. All these materials around, it actually doesn't change color when you urinate, but only the colorful pads. Mm -hmm. That's another IP, actually. It's, it's something so simple, but it took months to perfect. The reference colors and the other metrics don't change colors when you urinate, but the ones we want change is colors. Mm. things like that yeah it's so much so much hard work on it and 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 we're working on different products we're trying to make this disappear right now we want to integrate something to your toilets so you don't even actually need this in oh, the near okay future. what would that be like what, what's the what's the gen 3 gen 4 in the mix hopefully we will be launching next year if everything goes well um so what we wanted to do is this is a simple process. You tried it, but how can it be more simple? How can it be more simple, especially for the elder community who needs it most? <laughs> and uh, we designed uh, basically toilet approaches that anybody can buy and integrate. And uh, it won't be this wide range of metrics when we first launch, but it will have a couple of the most favorite by our customers. What has surprised you the most with this technology? In other words, you know, lots of customers. How many customers across the world now have you have you had? Uh, so we have over sixty thousand users and around thirty five thousand customers. Users means, for example, you are not a customer, but you're a user. Yes. If you go back to a website and purchase, you will be a customer as well, like that, uh, because we give a lot of uh, tests away for people to try it and give us feedback. Uh, what surprised me most is, I guess, uh, how, how quickly we grew, I guess, because um, we have a natural barrier, which is a test. I'm sure you know the hardware companies and software companies, they have different barriers, like software companies, you can scale forever so fast, but hardware companies, you have to produce it, ship it, and we produce this in-house. Uh, we have a manufacturing facility in Turkey, where I'm from that we are on top of every detail, uh, which is a really hard process. I wish we outsourced it at the beginning, but now we are on top. Of, we are so on top of every detail. We just don't want to let it go to IP, to China or anywhere. And um, we saw that because it's a hardware, which is paper-based, it is much faster to produce. It's more affordable and it helped us to scale much faster. And if I could, I would give millions of millions for free and in the next years that's where we are planning like if we could give these for free and people can take the taste of it if they want they can come back and subscribe or they can just test themselves for free and yeah wow because i could see like you're right if you if it was just on the phone then you didn't have to send them an actual test people would probably do it more but we're a physical body so we need a physical apparatus to test with yeah. i don't see that ever changing i mean obviously we're not going to be urinating on the phone <laughs> that's not going to happen we have to urinate on an actual piece of paper right so so i don't yeah. see that ever being something that could be a huge barrier to entry it seems like i don't i don't see how much easier it could get is what i'm saying it look it's so simple to do it's like two seconds of urinating on the the, the strip here is there going to be something in the future where you can get even more of these biomarkers mm -hmm. even more of these body signatures or do the 11 parameters now that that's good enough no it's not good enough <laughs> um again uh, we're always working uh and as you know, there is a huge lateral flow of testing, which is like almost like COVID testing or pregnancy testing methods, which uh, we have developed multiple tests already uh, to expand the testing range in terms of hormones like cortisol, like vitamin B, et cetera. But more, more, more of those plus colorimetric tests, plus I think our smart toilet can turn into um, basically an unlimited capacity capacity just because urine has if you go to human uh, meta metabolome database you will be seeing urine carries more than 4000 metabolites around half of it is actually quantifiable we're talking about iron we're talking about uh, melatonin we're talking about like uh, 
some growth hormones. Like there is a lot of data. We cannot measure all of them with colorimetric tests, tests, but we don't have to stay in this limitation. We will be expanding for sure. But there is one important criteria for us. It has to be at home. We don't want you to collect, pee on a cuff, <laughs> send it to yeah. lab. Yeah. We don't want that. And second, it has to be affordable. If it's going to be a hundred dollar a test, like <laughs> nobody would want to do it. And I don't want to sell it. I don't want to like try to grab as much as money, but I wanted to, I want to scale this as big as possible. And third, the most important, it should be engaging and motivating. If we have these criteria, we can add anything that can come into our system. I can see this being paired really well with the CGM. Are you familiar with the continuous glucose monitoring? Yeah. So I, I think about like my diet and I worked with a company called NutriSense. They're one of our partners. Mm. And I, I really loved when I would eat certain foods, like whether it be bean or rice. I did the, the N equals one test. I was so shocked at how some of these foods would spike my glucose and some of them would not. So I started playing around with food combining. Have you ever cross-referenced data from a CGM yeah. with uh, I have a diary. I, I don't have the details. I, we can actually chat about it. I have a diary. Vivu, <laughs> I actually, it got even crazier. I was also saliva testing, uh, Vivu testing and uh, CGM and cross-checking everything with a diary. <laughs> I was, I don't remember. I was so excited. I was like this detective. Uh, a CGM is the same thing, actually. It's just, I, I use, I don't know, maybe 10 batches for 15 days, 15 days. Now when I see a food, I can see the spike. <laughs> like it just, <laughs> it just yeah. taught me that, please, by the way, introduce us with NutriSense. We would love, love to talk and partner with them. If we can create some amazing data that maybe is super competitive that no other company has. Yeah, because, you know, when we're dehydrated, when we're underslept, it can affect our blood sugar just as much as food, oh, you know, just as much is. as food. And people don't realize that. We'll link that below as well. You know, as we round out the podcast, That's I've true. been curious about this for a long time. Someone who is very technologically savvy, you know, you're the founder of a technology company. How, how do you define wellness? You know, wellness in my eye and in my heart is mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, financial. It's the amalgam of what I call the, the Pentagon of wellness, all these different categories that we've signed up to be here on planet Earth. We have to have mastery in these categories. But from your lens, you know, is it is it really about the technology or is it about technology teaching us how to be well? And then also, how do you define wellness? You know, how do you live your life well? It's simple as like, I, I, for me, wellness is listening to your body's voice listening your mind's voice. Uh, if it's financial wellness, yes, like listening actually, maybe your bank account's voice. What is it telling you? What is it showing you? What are the trends? <laughs> so um, just giving it, giving it, giving it some thought, giving it some interest. I think that's, that's what it is for me. And my health and balance is, is, a, is, a, is such a big topic. I, I realized if, if the, if the hole is strong, if one element goes down, for example, I've been flying for days and I have sleepless, but I, I was extra careful to hydrate myself, to eat well, to breathe, because my, my heart rate is right up always it's so high. But if I make my breathing exercises, so if, if the hole is strong, even if, if a piece falls down, you can stand up strong. That's my approach. So I'm trying to always see everything as a holistic it's not just about my vivo test results did i also walk enough did i also read enough you know if i don't read every day some sort of book or some nice articles i also feel i'm deprived it's not sleep it's not food but my mind is deprived it, mm. it causes me unhappy it, it results me as being unhappy and i eat bad stuff it's just like a spiral <laughs> so yeah it's too holistic for me i guess like every element is important well, you're definitely speaking our language, and I totally agree. The The tool and the intention, really, the intention behind the tool is so important because what I got from you was this curiosity about making sure that the whole is strong. 
And then if one thing falls away, it's not the end of the world. You know, if you don't get enough sleep, then make sure you catch up on your sleep and don't make any poor decisions at the bakery when the cupcake looks amazing. Like, don't do that. <laughs> you know, don't, don't go there. So I've really enjoyed this and I, and I love this technology and I am going to be signing up to make sure that I'm properly hydrated because sometimes I do a lot of sauna. It's very hot here in Texas. For people yeah. like myself that live in really, really warm climates, it's important. We can't always go off of, quote, how we feel. Sometimes it's really important to have data. So we covered a lot of ground. Is there anything that you have not been asked on a podcast? Or is there anything about the technology or, or any of the biomarkers that possibly we missed? I can just maybe highlight one more time uh, that let's not forget uh, I think around 60% of Americans are not make, meeting their daily ma magnesium intake and it's 70% for uh, calcium intake. So uh, if you're not testing with Vivu, it's fine. You don't have to test with Vivu, but please be mindful of what you're eating. As, you're, as well as you're counting calories, try to count nutrients as well because mm. we are living longer. I'm going to see over 100 probably, right? I'm, I'm 30 now. 90 something easily I will see, but I want to be healthy when I get there. I don't want to be like barely walking and suffering for decades. So these nutrient deficiencies are really, really, really important. You should keep an eye on. And thank you so much, Josh. It was so fun. Thank you. Yes, I really enjoyed this. And like I said to everyone who stayed with us here, it's joshtrent.com forward slash vivo. It's V-I-V-O-O. And the code is Josh. Give this a test. It's 30% off. You really don't have anything to lose. You actually have everything to gain because you're going to know who you are from the inside out. So thank you, Mirai, for coming on the show. Thank and you. until we see you again, the entire global community, we're wishing you and everyone else love and wellness. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>